Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to continue my series on combinatorics with one of my favorite number sequences, the Catalan numbers. You can find the Catalan numbers in a lot of places, no, really, a lot, but one of the most natural is in counting balanced strings of parentheses. A string of parentheses is called balanced, if every open paren is matched somewhere later with a corresponding closed paren, with no extras or mismatched parentheses anywhere. And the Catalan numbers, C sub n, count the number of balanced strings with n open parens and n closed parens. So, for example, if we have three open parens and three closed parens, then we can make five sequences like so. And so we say that C sub 3 is 5. And the first few Catalan numbers are C sub 0 is 1, C sub 1 is 1, 2, 5, 14, 42, 132, 429, and so on. How can we find a formula for the C sub n? We'll start by finding a relationship between them by counting something in two different ways. So, say we have n plus 1 pairs of parentheses to match. By definition, there are c sub n plus 1 ways to arrange them. Now consider the first open paren and its corresponding closed paren. And let's suppose that we have k pairs of parentheses inside. Well, if there's k pairs inside, and one pair here, and a total of n plus 1, then that means we must have n minus k pairs outside, and they all have to be to the right since this was the first open paren. Well, that means that there must be c sub k ways to arrange the inside, and c sub n minus k ways to arrange the outside. And because k could be any number up to n, that means that this is the sum from k equals 0 to n. Now that we've got a recurrence relation, we can throw generating functions at the problem. As always, we multiply through by an appropriate power of x and take the sum over all n. This left side, as we've seen before, comes out to 1 over x times c of x minus 1. And this right side is a product of two generating functions, namely c of x times c of x, that is, c of x squared. Rearranging, we get x c of x squared minus c of x plus 1 equals 0. And this here is a quadratic equation, so we can plug it into the quadratic formula to get c of x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4x all over 2x. Now, the positive solution turns out not to work. It's a poll for all you analysis folks. So we'll only concern ourselves with the negative solution. And if we take the Taylor series expansion for this, we get that c of x is the sum for n greater than or equal to 0 of 2n choose n divided by n plus 1 times x to the n, which tells us that c sub n is 2n choose n divided by n plus 1. Now, generating functions are a great way to find a formula like this, and we could be happy with just that, but this approach 
doesn't really give us a good intuition for why that formula works. Well, this is a series on combinatorics, so let's see if we can find another way to prove it by counting something in two different ways. Let's start by taking a balanced string like this one. And notice that if we stick an open paren in front of it, then any sequence starting at the beginning will have strictly more open parens than closed parens. So here we've got three open parens and only one closed paren. We'll call a string like this, where every starting sequence has more open parens than closed parens, a dominated string. And conversely, if we have a dominated string with n plus 1 open parens and n closed parens, then taking off the leading open paren gives us a balanced string. And there are c sub n balanced strings, so there must also be c sub n dominated strings. Now let's take our string and write it clockwise around a circle. So we've got our open paren, and then open, close, open, open, close, close. How many ways can we read parentheses off this circle to get a dominated string back out? We could start here, that would give us our original string back, but are there any other places we could start? Well, clearly we can't start with a closed paren, and we also can't start with an open paren followed by a closed paren, because then we would have an equal number of open and closed parens in our starting sequence, and that wouldn't be a dominated string. But notice that if we have an open-closed pair somewhere in a dominated string, then if we just remove them, what's left over will still be dominated. And so for purposes of our cyclic order, we can just remove them and we won't change anything. The string will still be dominated if and only if the string without these two is dominated. And then we can repeat the process. So we can cross these off, since this is an open followed by a close, and cross these off, and then we're left with just one possible starting point. And it's not too hard to show that this is true of any circle with n plus 1 open parens and n closed parens. Exactly one of the parentheses can be a starting point for a dominated string. And we saw a moment ago there are c sub n dominated strings, and a total of 2n plus 1 choose n plus 1 strings with n plus 1 open parens and n closed parens, and of those, 1 out of every 2n plus 1 starts in the right position in this cyclic order to be a dominated string. And then by the absorption identity, which we saw a few videos back, we get that this is 1 over 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over n plus 1 times 2n, choose n. And then these cancel, and we're left with the identity we were trying to prove. There's another very nice formula for the Catalan numbers, which we can see using something known as the principle of reflection. To get there, we'll first need to reinterpret the Catalan numbers one more time. So instead of counting strings of open and closed parentheses, we'll instead count paths starting at the origin, composed of steps right and steps up. So a string with n open parens and n closed parens corresponds to a path from 0, 0 to n, n. And our restriction that a string be balanced corresponds to a restriction that our paths 
never cross the line y equals x. They may intersect, as they do here, but they can never pass above it. So, how many of these paths are there? Well, as a first guess, we can count the paths ignoring that restriction. So, all of the paths from 0, 0 to n, n. And as we know, there are 2n, choose n of those. But clearly, we're overcounting here. We're including paths like this one, which cross over the line. So, how much are we overcounting by? Well, notice that every path that passes above y equals x must somewhere intersect the line immediately above it. That is, y equals x plus 1. So, let's take each such path and reflect it across the line, starting at its first intersection point here. So this purple path here gets reflected into this path here. And since the original path ended at n n, when we reflect it across the line, it's going to end at the reflected point there, n minus 1 n plus 1. And notice that we can undo this process. If we've got a path starting at the origin and ending at n minus 1, n plus 1, we can go back to its first intersection and reflect again to get back a path that goes to n, n. And so there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these paths that cross over the line y equals x, and these paths from the origin to n minus 1, n plus 1. So there must be the same number of them. And we can count the paths to here. That's just going to be 2n choose n minus 1. And this counts all of the paths that stay below our line, so that's going to give us C sub n. Earlier, I said there were lots of other things that the Catalan numbers count. Let's take a look at some examples. If you've got a convex polygon with n plus 2 vertices, there are C sub n ways to draw n minus 1 diagonals to cut it into triangles. Alternatively, if you have two n points arranged in a circle, there are C sub n ways to connect them in pairs without any intersections. If you're a computer scientist, you've probably seen binary search trees. It turns out there are C sub n distinct shapes that a binary tree with n nodes can make. And there are also C sub n sequences that can be sorted in one pass using only a single stack for auxiliary storage. The Catalan numbers also count the number of ways to arrange the numbers 1 through n when you don't have any three consecutive elements in order, like so, or ways to arrange the numbers 1 through 2n into two rows, where each number is larger than the numbers below it or to its left, and so many other things. I encourage you to prove in the comments below that each of these really have the same count. And if you know any other interesting places the Catalan numbers are hiding, I'd love to see those in the comments too. Next time, we'll look at permutations without this constraint on consecutive elements, and some of the fascinating patterns that can be found within them. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.